Welcome to The Extra Dimension. This episode is on the topic of YouTube Red, featuring Ryan Rampersad and Ian Buck. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED7. So what are we talking about today, Ryan? We are talking about YouTube's latest thing. Yeah. Latest subscription... Money grab. ...thing. It's not anything like the other ones they've ever had before. Sort of. I mean, they did have a couple of failed attempts at, at getting users, viewers to actually... Pay money th- for things? Throw money. It wasn't... It, it was a voluntary thing, though, which I think is why... Uh, well, I mean, this is voluntary as well, but, like, it, it was just... It was more of a charity thing, kind of like yep. a Kickstarter. You could just tip somebody a video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you didn't directly get anything in return. Right. So this this is called YouTube Red. Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, we have to get the thing out of the way. Why is it called Red? Right. Uh, well, as we all know, YouTube's uh, um, icon, their logo and everything, is red. And I guess that was good enough for them? Or they're trying to climb out of the red. Right. Oh, wait. No, no, you're right. Red is bad. Black is good. Yes, because Black Friday. Very good. Yep, yep. Got it. Yeah. Um. Do you really think that they're mm, doing that badly, though? I don't think they're, they're doing that badly, but this will definitely help. I, I vaguely remember the number $5 billion revenue something in uh, in the Verge feature that we linked to. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it. So yeah, so what is this? This is a $10 a month subscription service uh, for YouTube. Now, why That's would I... That's a little bit more complicated than that sounds, so we'll get there. Yeah. So why would I want to subscribe to a thing that I already get for free? Well, I'm glad that I asked myself that rhetorical question because it gives uh, it gives the users ad-free viewing for everything on YouTube. Which sounds great. Mm-hmm. So... Yep. On your average day, when you watch some YouTube videos, how many ads do you think you see? I I I see uh about one ad per per two or three. You yeah. Know, good good length seven minute. I would or, say that's know, about right. Yeah. Videos. Now for me, what annoys me even more than just getting a YouTube ad, you know, you can hit you can hit skip in five seconds, but when I get a fifteen second one, I can't skip on the Chromecast. Mm-hmm. That is the worst. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention like that. That number that I gave at one per three mm-hmm. uh, videos, that's only for the pre-roll ads. Of course, they, oh, of they course. also have the ads that show up down at the bottom of, of the video mm-hmm. and the ones over to the right of the page. Yeah. Um, and those uh, are going to be like almost always there yeah. for videos that, that are using advertising to make money. Stop doing that. Uh, what? Stop trying to make money? Yeah, don't do off that. Off of the things that I do for passion? Yeah, stop doing that. Oh, no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Hey, maybe we should have some sponsors on the podcast. Hey, hey, how you doing, Qualcomm? Those can't be blocked. No. Um, We'll get to blocking later. Mm-hmm. Uh, But yeah, so so it, it gives ad-free viewing on YouTube, Um, and it also gives offline viewing on mobile. Which is very cool. Yep. And uh, depending on how, you know what your situation is um you may or may not actually want that feature you know because like if i have um uh not very much uh um, storage space on my phone but i have a large data plan i'm not going to use that right if i have uh more storage space but and i live in somewhere where there's not very much bandwidth i'll probably use that so i mean i I think there's a lot of good uses for it somebody like matt who has no internet at home Mm -hmm. he could come here download in any number of videos he wants and then go back home and watch them yeah that's really cool i also think it could be useful too if you were listening to like a, a, a podcast maybe on on youtube, YouTube the, instead of a video podcast SoundCloud? they, they, they okay, do that yeah, yeah. They, there are video podcasts that are mostly just audio anyway right and you could save the audio only mm-hmm. and so then you could just listen to it whenever you want yeah well um i I don't know if that you can actually do the audio only on something that isn't classified as music. Um, oh, okay. When I was when I was watching the hands-on videos, mm-hmm. um, he talked about having the audio only option in the new YouTube Music mm. app, um, but he didn't talk about that in the regular YouTube. I'd app. be surprised if they didn't have it. Um, yeah, because the files on the servers are organized in video and in audio. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I don't have the show notes in front of me now because this thing just blue screened. <laughs> Doom clock. <laughs> so I'll just whip out a laptop. And well, while you're whipping that out, in addition to offline viewing, they also have an even more important feature, which would be background playback. Mm-hmm. Now, background playback is something everybody has wanted on YouTube for years. 
Now, what what do you think about background playback? Was how important is that for you? Um, it's uh, you know I don't find myself watching things on YouTube on a, on, a, on a mobile device mm-hmm. very often. Um, for almost always, it's on a desktop um, or on a television. Um, but yeah, there there are times when I am watching a video and I either want to look up something that they're talking about or um, or yeah, like I get a message or whatever. Um, and I need to leave the YouTube app for, for a little bit mm-hmm. and, and I would like to still hear them talking about whatever they're talking about, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I do quite a bit of that. Uh, I'll be listening to, um, some Guild Wars news or just a, a video podcast that's really just audio. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I would like to go read some tech news or, you know, go check a tweet or something, but I can't because once I do it, I'm going to be kicked out and locked out of the video for a while. So I think we need to clarify a very important point here, which is that this is the same subscription, essentially, as Google Music All Access. Right. Yes. So what, what does that mean? Does that mean you can pay for just one and you get the other? Yes. Uh, it, it, in theory, it means that when you, when you get either one, you get both of them, mm-hmm. right? And more importantly than that, um, it means that hopefully the the family plan that they talked about at the uh, Nexus event earlier this month, uh, or last month, or whenever it was, close um, enough. Yeah, uh, that should give all six uh, all six um, accounts access to go- uh, YouTube Red as well. Yeah, good YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of distracted right now. What's the pin on this computer? Should be eighteen twenty five. Don't hack me. There we go. Okay. (laughs) So I think it's interesting that they would bundle the two things. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of overlap. People are using YouTube to play music Mm -hmm. anyway, and Google Music All Access is exactly that. It's all the music. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to have that overlap. Um, Hopefully, And and when they were first testing this out, they Mm -hmm. had the um, the, uh, music key beta is what I think they called it for YouTube, and that was available to people who had uh, Google Music All Access. Right. Um, and, but that just confused a lot of people. Like, why are why, why do I two? get yeah? Why do I get ad free viewing and offline and background and everything only on some videos right. in YouTube? Um, the the example that they gave in there was um the um this guy's daughter you know she likes to watch uh frozen videos Mm -hmm. because she likes to listen to the songs in them right makes sense but uh disney didn't upload them as like the frozen soundtrack right right, under a music um category um, or license whatever yeah license yeah would be the right thing yeah Mm -hmm. um they uploaded them as these are clips from a movie right don't you dare let people you know watch these without ads yeah whatever Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah, I can I can see why Google would really want to push for that because it makes way more sense to have the consistent experience, mm-hmm. especially when there are so many videos that are audio based and not necessarily just video. Yep. So, how, do you do you think that it will always be paired like this? You'll always get both if you just buy it. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so because um, it it's it makes for a really really good. Uh, customer experience mm-hmm. when your when your loyalty is rewarded that way. You mm-hmm. know, I signed up for Google Music All Access way back when it first came out. Yep, I um, was there. Google I/O like two years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still on that eight dollars a month instead oh, yeah. of ten dollars a month price. Um, and uh, and when when I heard about you know YouTube Red actually coming, I was like, oh, does it actually? You know, will I get it without? You know, because I was thinking about like, is this worth ten dollars a month to me? Mm-hmm. And I mean, it it is, but not right now because right. I have a lot of other things that I'm looking at buying. You know, I needed a new television, mm-hmm. so, you know, stuff like that. Right. Um. Uh. And and so I was like, I can't really afford to just go and get another subscription service. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I get it with my already existing one uh made me the happiest person for like five minutes i think it's extremely complimentary even at the 15 dollar family price Mm -hmm. i think that's you know six people that's what 250 a person or something something like that yeah that's pretty uh aggressively priced and i think that's almost worth it yeah Mm -hmm. it definitely is almost worth it it's well, in the world where people can't even pay 99 cents for an app it's almost worth it okay yeah yeah but you know what i mean um, it, you know, in a world where other people are willing to pay $10 a month for, uh, for like Spotify premium 
and fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. No, sorry, not fifteen dollars. Um, like nine dollars a month for Netflix, right. and you know, it, it all adds up. This is uh, a very bold statement by YouTube mm-hmm. and by well by Google saying like, we'll just give you them. Here you go. Yeah, I like it. We should do that more. Uh huh. Um, so let's see. In addition to the technical features that it's bringing and the ad-free viewing, um, they are bringing some exclusive programming to to YouTube Red uh, because, as we know, every subscription service needs well video subscription service needs to have exclusive programming. You know, you've got. Do they really? Well, you, I mean, that's where the. I mean, hot, it makes sense. Like when you think about Amazon Prime and uh, Netflix, they're not competing for the you know for what movies they have and what t- television shows from from you know outside networks they have they're competing over which one of us can make cooler uh um exclusive original series right so how, how's that working out um i mean f- i haven't paid any attention to any of them except yeah. for daredevil uh-huh. so and w- um, which is on who uh netflix yep. okay then that was so the reason that i when got I a netflix hear amazon account. prime and i hear netflix amazon prime is for shipping and all that other stuff is irrelevant. <laughs> so it's, I mean, imagine if this deal also gave you 100 gigs in your Google Drive. Oh. You know, imagine something like that. Oh. You know, then it becomes, oh, well, why not do it? Now you're, now that, that's already $20 a year or 24. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. two bucks a month. So right. 24. Yep. So it's already $24. So imagine if you just got, you know, a bunch of gigs in your, Google Drive. Why not do it? So I could see like Google wrapping more things into this. Mm hmm. Almost cleverly named all access. There you go. Kind of plan. Um, I do. I do uh, think that it makes sense though to have that be separate because um, the YouTube Red and the Google Music All Access are consumer focused, right? Which is funny. Um, and the the Google Drive more storage is kind of creator focused, right? If I'm making a lot of files and I need to store them and back them mm, up and everything, maybe. Um, you know, but you understand. Kind I don't. Of the I don't know. Right? If, I don't know if those people think of themselves as creators. I made a Word doc. Oh, I'm a creator. Well, uh, nobody's going to fill up uh, 15 gigs with Word docs. You'd be surprised. You know, it's going to be the people taking raw photos and yeah, foolishly yeah. uploading them all at original. You know, um, just just little resolution. perks like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so. So do we I know agree. when these exclusive things, whatever they turn out to be, come out? Uh, no, no. The rest of these features come out uh, October 28th. Mm-hmm. Um, the other ones, uh, the exclusive programming, the exclusive content comes whenever it's done, I guess. Um, and the other, the other way that it differs from the exclusive content made by Netflix and uh, Amazon is that instead of just grabbing as many like kind of television based people as mm-hmm. they possibly can um they're pulling the the most popular youtubers that they can and then like giving them large budgets and pairing them up with you know people who have experience making shows um so there is a little so it's bit it's already the... going to be people I don't watch anyway yeah probably yeah, but okay. i mean but like when you think of the the fan base on youtube these are going to be things that they are going to want to watch anyway because mm-hmm. it's it has the personalities that they came to YouTube to see. Unfortunately. Right? Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a fan of a few people on YouTube. I don't think that any of them are involved in any of this uh, exclusive programming. But if they were, I would definitely watch it. So is there going to be a thing in the future where you have to have YouTube Red to see it? That's what these are. What do you mean? Well, so like... Um, there's something called PewDiePie. I don't know what that is. He's a dude. He's from Sweden. Man, do I sound like an old person. Sure. And I have no idea what that is, but I would never watch that. Now, I would watch something like MKBHD, for example. Right. If he puts... Now, what if he suddenly redifies all of his red and black content? What happens? Um, then... uh, Well, so that's the thing, though, is I don't think that the creators, the uploaders, have the choice of, like... Saying I want this particular video to be so an it's exclusive. an editorial decision yeah, on YouTube's part. Exactly. Now, what if sometime in the future that just changes and like creators are given the opportunity to paywall themselves? That would be really interesting. I actually wrote down in the in the section below uh, from the creator's point of view, um, which is where we're heading to. Are we? Uh, oh yeah, I suppose we did talk about this from the consumer's point of view already, didn't we? Kind of. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So so. The thing that I was kind of interested in um, is, you know, if, if I if I make something and I want to put it on YouTube, basically my my only options are to provide it for free, mm-hmm. right, um, and then just 
get get some revenue from the more people who watch it. Um, or, I mean, this doesn't give me another choice, right? Right. That, that I still just uploaded it exactly the way that I did before. So it's either for free or you might get an ad for it. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that, you know, you would do if you're making a video is I, I could make something and I think that it's high enough quality and, and long enough and everything that I want to actually sell it to people traditional. They now own a copy of it, mm-hmm. quote unquote, and I get their money. Um, that's not an option in YouTube still. I don't know if that's an option anywhere on the internet. Anymore. Uh, well, it kind of, I mean, where can you sell an individual video? Um, I think Vimeo. Really? Yeah, I think that that oh. was kind of the basis have, of of. The I've service. never seen it before in my life. I can see how that worked out. Um, there's, I mean, there's also been a couple of, um, you know, um, SNBC Theater. They after they kind of finished making shorts for their YouTube channel, they decided to make a, a longer format thing. And, uh, and they, yeah, were selling it for a few dollars through whatever unknown website they found that would allow them to do that. Hmm. Right. Um, so, so yeah, uh, it's still not an option through YouTube is, right. is the bottom line. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, I think it kind of makes sense from YouTube's point of view mm-hmm. because the way that they have made it is that everything that's on YouTube is shareable, Right. right? If if I watch something and I think that it's great, I think it's funny, I think, you know, that other people are going to enjoy it, I just take that link, boop, put it into whatever social media I want to, and uh, and I send it off, and then everybody else who, who sees that link can watch it, guaranteed. Whether they are paying money or not, they'll be able to watch it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Whereas if if I go and review The Martian, people have to make the choice to get their butts up out of their house, go to the nearest um, theater place, and spend some money on tickets and popcorn, and then watch the movie. Exactly. You know, it's 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 the ease of access that that YouTube has as its advantage. Definitely. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the nitty gritties of uh, of the the money side of this. Uh, um, the subscription service, right? Yeah. Um, because the assumption that you make is, um, if I'm subscribing to this thing and putting actual money into it, the the creators that I'm watching, I'm actually supporting them Hopefully. more more monetarily than I was with ads, right? Hopefully, we absolutely do not know that yet. We have no idea. It's going to be very hard, actually, to get money or sorry to get numbers for that. I think un- unless somebody tells us, yeah. Um, yeah, unless creators go and like kind of take a look at their numbers before and after, hopefully they hadn't, you know, didn't change a significant number of like subscribers or views or likes or anything like that. Cause I'm sure that that all goes into the algorithm somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, but so here's what we know so far when, um, in the existing ad revenue model, creators get 50% of the revenue, 55% of the revenue and Google gets 45% of the revenue revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know exactly how often ads are counted towards you, you know, and how much money you get from each ad. For example, you know, like, um, if I, if I, uh, am watching a YouTube video and I get that, you know, it's skippable after five seconds yep. thing and I skip it right away. Um, we, we know that the creator does not get any money from that. Mm-hmm. You have to watch it Man, for longer than all that. the people I see ads from are so poor right now. <laughs> um, but, but the thing is though, we don't know exactly how long somebody has to watch an ad mm-hmm. until before the creator gets that money. Right? right. Um, I'm sure that, um, uh, us actually clicking through and, and doing something on, on another website is going to create a little bit more revenue than mm-hmm. just passively watching a thing, you know? Um, but there, there's a lot of unknowns there. Right. Um, but so the, but the bottom line is 55% of the revenue goes to the creators, right? And that's for ads. Yeah, it's for ads. Yeah. For the subscription, the new, uh, YouTube bread service, um, all that they've said is that the creators still get most of the revenue, which, I'm, I can't imagine that it is higher than 55%, and most just means that it is not less than 50%. Yeah, that's a tough place. Right. I mean... Which which I does give hope, us a narrow kind I would of range. hope that it's more, because otherwise, mm-hmm. why is this beneficial for those creators? Right. Well, I mean, yes, it is It is a concern of YouTube's to make sure that creators feel like they are benefiting. On the other uh, hand, you know, so like, let's say you have your $10 pool of 
funds to allocate. So then you, you go and watch somebody. Uh huh. And then they get a few cents, you know, a nickel or whatever. Sure. And then you eventually, you, all month long, you've run out of funds. And then any videos you watch after that, suddenly they don't get anything. I don't think that's how that'd be it awful. Works. Um, so, so I'm going to uh, give you what I know about the Google Music All Access okay. subscription. Hopefully, service. it's better than that. So the the way that it works is, um, so I'm paying eight bucks a month, right? That money gets put into a giant pool with everybody else's money, uh, who's who's part of the subscription service. Mm-hmm. After Google's cut, then the the total views by everybody who's subscribed gets added up. And the um, the money, the total money, gets divided, you know, according to those many views to those publishers and creators. And Sounds like a lot of work. It is well, and and so the reason, so the you you might expect that like my eight dollars gets distributed evenly between the people that I'm listening to, mm-hmm. um, but the the way that the uh the the way that the system actually works is if I listen to a lot more music than you, Ryan, then my my listens will have more of an impact on where both of our money goes, mm-hmm. right? Um, which seems reasonable, except that then you get, you know, people who are claiming that, like, there are robots out there that just, like, stream one yeah. one artist's stuff over and over and over again um, to give that artist more revenue. But who's going to create a robot that part of its operating cost is $10 a month of, you know, uh, stream? Uh, yeah. uh, the uh, InfoSec Taylor Swift. Sure. Robot, <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't uh, go for those streaming services, right? Um, she, no, she removed herself from. That's from... why the robot's doing it mm. to encourage her to come back, Taylor Swift. Come right, back. Ex- exactly. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about, just so you know. So, uh, so hopefully, I mean, it, it would make sense for it to be kind of the same system, right? All of the money from YouTube Red um, gets put into a into a pot. And then all of the views that I, uh, all of the YouTube creators get from those subscribers get put into a you know a list count, and then it gets distributed evenly. Still hope to get more though, than um, ads. Right. Yeah. And and so the the thing that you have to think about is um it's going to take me many 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 views to get up to the point where ten dollars of of ad revenue has been generated. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know exactly what it is, but a- as we were talking about, uh, during the fringe, um, on my personal YouTube, uh, um, account, we can see that I've had almost a thousand views since I started putting ads yep. on, on my videos and I have received, uh, 89 cents. Good stuff. So that's, uh, so that's what all, almost a dollar per 1000 views. Yeah. Um, and we don't know. We really don't know what it's going to be like once the um, subscription service starts. But uh, but hopefully it's it's better than a dollar per thousand views. Well, you can al- you can already just imagine that there's going to be a lot less paying people than free people. Right. So mm-hmm. it's not as if suddenly half of YouTube it, viewers mm-hmm. suddenly start paying. Mm-hmm. So even if this is you know even if it is still fifty five percent. Fifty-five percent of ten dollars, or you know, you know, whatever revenue generated from Red, that's right. going to be more probably than whatever the ads are making, mm-hmm. even if it is smaller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the other question that I actually just thought of that I I don't know the answer to is, uh, does that how does that get divided up with the Google Music people as well? You uh, know, it's got to be based on usage. Okay, so so if you're somebody who subscribes. Um, let's say f- for some reason you subscribed to Google Music All Access, mm-hmm. which gives you both, right? You have right. YouTube Red as well. You watch way more YouTube videos than you do, um, uh, music. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where, how is that going to be divided it's, up? It's got to be they, used. You, do they all go into the same pot overall? It's got to be is usage it... based. Okay. It's just not fair otherwise. It'll be interesting to see if they put out uh, any statements on on exactly I don't, how. I don't that know works. if Google will do that. I think individual people might, mm-hmm. and I don't know if they're supposed to. It'll be oh, like individual people within Google. Yeah. Oh, right. Yep. Yeah, they'll be fired. Um, or just looked at funny. Sure. When they're out on the field alone. Um. So I. I mean, I have optimism about it, but I don't have enough optimism that 
I believe that that people are going to be able to make it without having to rely on like selling T-shirts in their own store, right, without Patreon, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least not the average YouTuber, right? Video yeah. person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. There will always be those exceptions, but you know that that upper thousand people that those are irrelevant because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people on YouTube. I mean, they're the ones who are doing exclusive uh, right, exactly. content anyway, right? Yeah. Um, now there there is uh, one piece of really really good news. Um, there were you know of course the the big publishers of uh, like you know music labels and um, probably you know TV networks or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted to uh, get a higher percentage of the revenue from the from the subscription service mm-hmm. than the average YouTuber they're so gets. important. Yeah, and and their argument was, yeah, we're the ones who are going to be bringing in subscription users for it. I don't think they understand the user base of YouTube. I don't think they do at all. No. Um, and luckily, YouTube, as, as a company, was like, no. N- no, this is how we're doing it, and you're going to be either with it or you're going to not be on YouTube. Um, and so the only... The only major player that uh you know kind of would not accept that and left is drum roll disney what a weird thing to do i'm not surprised disney is a uh, pretty user hostile in terms of of this type of thing you know they don't have um any of their you know television shows available to watch on their own website or anywhere else um they're doing it wrong yeah it's so dumb um what am i supposed to do buy the episodes on amazon no way sheesh that is actually what i have to do yeah. um oh, but what about like uh nintendo when they were taking down everybody's ah, um yeah. you know let's plays i guess mm-hmm. uh well how about that like um d- does nintendo split the revenue or was nintendo taking all of the money from those let's players uh, that they left up for a while they were and then um and then they they came up with this like nintendo partner program mm-hmm. where you could um go through the steps of becoming like an approved person for making nintendo related videos and then you would get a share of the so share is of is nintendo the gonna get a share of the red revenue and then totally say oh we lost it and you can't have it back you know they they don't mm-hmm. want to share you know the good money with the with the people who make their good money. But that's a good point though. Is I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, for for um for videos with third party mar- matched content, which means oops, you uploaded a song that you mm-hmm. don't own, you know right. that you don't have the rights to. Um, I'm pretty sure that the ad revenue will go to the person who is currently getting. Right. The, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the red ex- revenue. Yeah, the subscription revenue is going to go to the same person who got would be getting the ad revenue for it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that either. Well, that's the way it works. Yeah, you know? I don't know how I feel that's, about that's that. That's how copyright. Works. I don't know if I like that. Um. Yeah, goodness. That was so. That's uh, YouTube Red. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of it's going to be hard to see exactly how many people um this matters to. Um, but we have a sample of two people right here. Uh, <laughs> are, is this something that that interests you, Ryan? I mean, if I can do the family version and I can split it among my family, mm-hmm. then yeah, definitely. Okay. If it's just for me, I will I'll live in my suffering. You know, I, I have Adblock on the computer. Mm-hmm. I will sit through my 15-second unskippable ad on Chromecast. Right. And everywhere else, I'll just weep silently. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can't do it for some reason, I guess it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, I don't think YouTube is going to change that fast. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't anger too many people. You can't anger the people who are making the content, and you can't anger the people who are watching it, because the people who are watching it watch the ads right now, and the people who make it make things so that you can see ads. We know how good YouTube is at angering the people who make things on YouTube. Turns out, yeah. so if they screw it up too badly, it'll fix itself. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So how about, how about you? Is, is this something you're going to go for? I mean, uh, like I said, um, luckily I already have it, so I don't have to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if if it was its own standalone thing um i would i would go for it once i was in a place where i didn't have as many other expenses mm-hmm. um i mean i wonder so there's not a lot of incentive for a person who doesn't know they're watching ads you know there are a lot of people who don't know ads like when mm-hmm. you see an ad you know like oh advertising right sure. again but there are a lot of people who if- just if you're the kind of person who clicks on the first link in a Google oh. search, not realizing that it's an ad, those people, those first clickers, those people, what? There's not a lot of incentive for them in saying offline playback and 
background playback those 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 don't matter at all to them Mm -hmm. so how will youtube and google at large convince people to go for it if those aren't the features that are there Are, are those same people who don't even know what ads are going to be convinced by exclusive content because i doubt it probably not um the other people who are going to be convinced by exclusive content are probably pretty darn aware of all of these issues that we're talking about anyway so how was that going to work because the people like us google's already fine with they don't they don't need to spend marketing dollars we've already drank their kool-aid so the cherry kool-aid too so where are where is google going to get the rest of the people in you know, I would like to say through Google Music All Access, but nobody knows that it exists exactly, either. Because it's a terrible name and the, the there's just not enough advertising. Again, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, luckily this isn't a thing that is like um, it's it's either going to do great or it's going to fail. It can coexist with ad yeah. at revenue I think they for a long time. struggled anyway. a long time to figure out how to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is. I well, yeah, and I'm, it's also just possible that it'll never be better than advertising. Could be, um, but yeah, there. I mean, there are going to be some people who it's worth it for, and there are going to be a lot of other people who it's not going to be worth it for. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know, I think why YouTube succeeded in the first place was because um, nobody wants to have to pay for all of the stuff that they consume. Um, Especially, you know, when we're in a when a, when we're in a society of um, watch all of the things and uh, don't make much money. Well, especially you know? when YouTube is the way YouTube is. You know, if everything that was on YouTube was guaranteed to be high quality and literally fantastic, right. then sure, maybe you would have been inclined from the beginning to pay for it through mm-hmm. the paywall. Mm-hmm. But well, you just could never know that it was good, and it would have never been good when most of it is me at the zoo. Or you know, I mean, imagine if the first episode of At the Nexus was on YouTube as you know, for some reason we used the MacBook Airs, not only mic but also webcam. Nobody would pay for that. <laughs> Nobody's going to pay for this show either. That's the point. Mm-hmm. Things aren't good enough to pay for, but they're good enough to listen to. Yeah, some things are, but not everything. That's not the- <laughs> that's the that's the takeaway. Isn't yeah, it? so sad. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, I'm excited that I that I get to. I was watching a, a bunch of YouTube videos about YouTube Red and <laughs> reveling in the irony that I'm watching ads before these videos and just going, "Your time is limited, ads. I'm not going to see you next week Ooh, this time." Yep. So that's always good. Mm-hmm. 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 Maybe. No, I shouldn't do that. I was I was just considering just like not watching any of my YouTube subscriptions for a week oh. now so that I can <laughs> so I can binge watch on them without seeing ads. No, that's not gonna be a good use of my time. No. No. Um It's so fascinating. It it fascinates me so much, like how different types of formats um have different types of revenue streams that are appropriate for them. Definitely. You know? Um and it I mean when you think about it, yes, it makes sense. But when you just kind of take a step back and and just kind of let that idea sit, it's like that is so strange. I mean, most of the revenue streams consist of just being poor. Mm-hmm. You know, whether whether you're an author selling books, most authors are just going to be poor. Right. Whether you're a YouTuber, most YouTubers are just going to be poor. Whether you're a podcaster, probably just going to be poor. So you either have to be really lucky or super good. Right. And otherwise, you're just going to be poor. That's how the capitalism works, right? Man, that capitalism needs to get fixed. Yeah. No, no more of that. We're done with that. So, Ryan, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar, And, of course, not on YouTube, because I don't put any videos up anywhere. Oh, that's a but shame. I hear that you do. I do, yes. I, I've uh, been getting more active with my channel, um, Ian Buck. And, uh, and you can also find me on Twitter at uh, Ian R. Buck. Um, most other places, yeah, you'll, you'll find me as one of those two things. Very good. Hopefully with a a website coming soon that is not powered by Chorus. Oh. Well, we'll let's talk about that some other time. Sure. Have a good one.
Yeah, es- especially if you can do it um, not just with, like, your younger sisters who, c- you know, can't afford that kind of thing, right. but do it with your, I don't know, six housemates who all have incomes and then uh, get them to pay you back, unlike the Netflix account, which they don't pay oh. you back for. Oh, am I describing my own household? Sorry. Should have put a marker there, put that at the end? <laughs> sure. <laughs> 